While many people across the state are working on prevention, traumatic events still happen. A fall, a car crash, an ATV accident. And unfortunately, Kentucky is not yet fully prepared to respond to trauma quickly and efficiently in all parts of the state from east to west. I would describe the trauma situation in the uh, western state of Kentucky as dismal, terrible. It's, it's, uh, it's scary. If I were going to drive to Louisville, I would go through Evansville. I would not go through central Kentucky because if you have a motor vehicle accident in central Kentucky, through the West Kentucky Parkway, your likelihood for survival is nearly zero. On a, day when a statewide trauma network has been established to help more hospitals here. become Point what is wounds. called a leveled hospital. Yes. In a trauma system, levels run from four to one, with one being the highest level of care. To become leveled, a hospital must demonstrate that it has a variety of plans and services in place to respond to trauma and move a patient quickly to a higher level. Studies have shown that if you take a patient to a leveled hospital, they reach the higher leveled hospital sooner, their survival rates are much higher. So that's why we wanted to become a leveled hospital. We also wanted to become a leveled hospital to encourage other little small hospitals to do the same. If we can do it, they can do it. Recently, Livingston Hospital became a level four hospital, making it only one of two in the state. It's a process that requires a great deal of community support. Susan Starling, CEO of Markham and Wallace Hospital in Irvine, the other level four hospital in the state, can't understand why this support is lacking. I'm passionate about rural health care in general. I'm passionate about trauma because it just doesn't make sense. When I first heard about Kentucky not having a trauma system, I just didn't get it. I couldn't understand why. It's, it's a, to me, a no-brainer. Markham and Wallace, go ahead. On a recent Tuesday afternoon, the Markham and Wallace trauma team staged a mock trauma alert. They do these regularly to practice protocols and streamline processes. As soon as the patient arrives, we start the 15-minute clock because that's our goal, to have the patient out within 15 minutes. When you're looking at a trauma network, it takes away kind of those care. barriers that allow us to do quickly focus on the patient and get them out. You know, there's that golden hour for the patient. If you can get a patient to a tertiary center and within that golden hour, then um, their outcomes will be better. And we try to have them out in 15 minutes. So we assess them, we stabilize them, and then we have them ready for transfer in a 15-minute time period. That's our goal. A federal law called EMTALA prevents hospitals from transferring a patient unless the other hospital first agrees to take a patient. In the past, calling yeah. around the hospitals exactly. ate up valuable time. Came in with blood pressure of 60 over 30. Yeah. Sometimes a transfer that could have been done in 15 minutes may take you an hour, an hour and a half because you have to have an accepting physician and you have to have an accepting hospital. Having a trauma network will take that out of the picture so that when the patient comes into the hospital, you can focus on the patient. For Blake Hardy and his family, the trauma network at Markham and Wallace meant the difference between life and death. My dad was lying in the yard and I was throwing apples at him and after he went up the hill, uh, I threw an apple and slid on it, and it started raining, and I slipped under the lawn. And I got him as quick, just got him as quick as I could, and put him in my truck, and we called 911 and started toward the hospital, and about halfway, about four miles from here to the hospital, and the ambulance intercepted us, and I followed them on to the hospital. Blake was stabilized and quickly transferred to Cincinnati Children's Hospital. While he lost his leg, they saved his life. I think Mark and Wallace did a wonderful job with him. I think it was their first trauma patient after they were certified. And I was very happy with how they did. They saved my little man's life. And that's all related to the work that we did in becoming a trauma network. It just seemed like everything was in place and we just, we knew what we were doing, we did it well, we did it fast, we had the processes in place, and we got to do the child to the right place at the right time, and it, it was a great outcome for that child. For Starling and Barnes, having only two level four trauma centers is just a drop in the bucket. If 
who want to reduce trauma fatalities across the state. People think when they go to bed at night that they are going to, if something happened to them, they'd call the ambulance, the ambulance would come and take them, pick them up and take them to a skilled facility that would be able to take care of them and they would be then miraculously healed and uh, go back home. And that is not going to happen. It has to be a priority to get this network going and I think that people care about it, but it's not a priority and it's always getting trumped by something else that's going on in the government. You have to get that champion in there to say, yes, we need this to happen. If it was cancer, if it was heart disease, there are champions in that out there, but right now we need to get that champion in the government to make this happen.